My dear viewer, welcome again today to our series on 40 Days of Prayer. We are grateful to the Lord that today we are on day that seven, just three more days to go. I want to first thank you so much for always being tuned in this program and the many blessings God has given us. Thank you for praying for your seven members and many of us have prayed for you and for more than seven people. Today, as we continue this series, I pray that the Lord may bless you wherever you are. On this day that seven, we are looking at the second angel's message. Yesterday, we looked at um, the first angel's message, and I'm glad that my colleague pastor, Stephen, was able to take us through for the last two days. And today, I come back again as we go through to the 40th day. Now, uh, chapter 14 of the book of Revelation, where we have the three angel's messages, we are specifically looking at verse number 6 down to verse number 9. And allow me to read uh, verse number 6 down to verse number 8. And I saw another angel fly in the midst of the heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth, and to every nation and kindred and tongue and people, saying with a loud voice, Fear God and give glory to him, for the hour of his judgment is come. And worship him that made the heaven and the earth, and the sea, and the fountains of waters. And there followed another angel, and that's where we are today in verse number 8. And there followed another angel, saying, Babylon is fallen, is fallen, that great city, because she made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of their fornication. And verse number 9, And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast and his image, and receive his mark in his forehead or in his heart. The same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out with, without mixture into the cup of his indignation. And she, he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment ascended up forever and ever, and they have no rest day nor night who worship the beast at his image, and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. Now this is the famous three angels messages, and we are in verse number eight, where we are looking at the second angel's message, and there followed another angel saying, Babylon is fallen, is fallen that great city, because she made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of a fornication. The first angel's message, and today the second angel's message. Before we open this text, let's pray. Our gracious Father in heaven, we thank you for the precious privilege of this fellowship and prayer moment. Lord, we invite your presence to be with us, be with my viewer, be with me right here. Feel as with your spirit, speak to us and through me, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. <coughs> Excuse me for that. Now, we saw the first angel flying in the midst of the air. And today we are seeing another angel likewise flying in the same manner. Now, just to mention here that the angels we are talking about here are not the literal angels. We are not expecting to see the angel as we know them flying with a spectacular, you know, seen in the, in the skies. Now, the angel, the Greek term for an angel is a messenger. And so, in other words, if we could interpret this one correctly, we would say, uh, John would have said, and I saw another messenger fly in the midst of the sky, the midst of heaven, with an everlasting gospel to preach to every person, every kindred, every tongue, and, you know, and every people. So, we are talking about messengers of our time. And so in verse number 7 says, in the, in the first angel's message, the messenger is calling people to fear God and to give him glory. Why fear God and why give him glory? It's because of who God is. You know, God is the creator. God is a sustainer. God is in charge of judgment. God is coming to destroy the earth, renew it, and, 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 and give people the sense a new face of a new earth, a new Jerusalem. So he has, to be, he has to be feared. He has to be respected. He has to be revered. This God, we need to worship him because in this world, there are many things that want to be worshipped. 
You know, the evil one, the Satan, the dragon want to be worshipped. And in fact, this book of Revelation, before this chapter 14, we know in chapter 12 and chapter 13, where there's, you know, the central message there is the dragon seeking to be worshipped, the controversy there. And so we are to worship the only true God. And so we are being invited. And so the second angel comes in, uh, the second messenger then in verse number 8, and says, and there followed another angel or another messenger saying, or another priest saying Babylon is fallen is fallen that great city because she made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of a fornication Babylon is fallen is a message of the second messenger now what is Babylon we know Babylon as we know it historically is a city but this particular prophecy here is not talking about the ritual Babylon city that we know in the history, but it's talking about, it's a symbolic term for the confusion that has come over and, and has covered the world in matters of righteousness and salvation. You see, Babylon is that confusion that the evil one has introduced in the world. That darkness that comes from sin, that which confuses right from the wrong, that which creates a counterfeit, a counterfeit, that which mars the, the, the path of God for his people to see. And there are many things that the evil one has devised as a means of confusing people. You see, it was uh, the Babylon that people of God were persecuted and people of God were taken captive and indeed many Christians today because of uh, the various devices, the, the, the schemes of the evil one that he has devised, many people have been put into Satan's captivity in sin. And so the, the, the angel, the second angel flies and declaring hope that even though the devil seemed to be prospering, even though the devil and the wickedness seem to be taking root and overcoming righteousness, yet for sure, the second messenger declares that God has overcome the evil one. God has overcome the wicked one. God has overcome the darkness in the world because Jesus has come and he is the light of the world. And so he says, I saw another angel flying in the midst of the sky with an everlasting gospel. And this particular time he says, Babylon is fallen. Babylon is fallen, that great city, because she made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of God. I mean, the, 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 the wrath of her fornication. You know, I am just reading one quote here uh, from Ellen G. White. The book is Maranatha, uh, page 171, and you discover that I love reading her quotes. She says here, God still has a people in Babylon, and before the visitation of his judgment, these faithful ones must be called out that they partake not of her sins and receive not of her plagues. God is working day and night to remove those who belong to him from the captivity. God is working day and night to set free the captives of Satan. God is working day and night to release those who are in the prisons of sin. And, you know, in this particular phrase here, or paragraph here, the pen of inspiration says that God still has his people. You know, when you look at people today in the world and how people have been, you know, messed up and have been confused and, have, you know, have been assimilated in the, the ways of life, in the ways of world today, you may not actually tell the difference between uh, even church and the world. You know, people are there and there is a lot of confusion in terms of what is God's will for our lives. You know, but, 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 but the text here indicate that God still has his people who are in the world and who ought to be called from the world to come into the fold. And that is where you and me stand to play a role. God has called you, God has called me that he can use us as his agents of reaching out to his who he identifies as his own people in Babylon, that we may bring them from Babylon, that we may call them out of Babylon. And that is why the church has this very noble, inspired initiative of total member involvement in calling out those who are in Babylon of sin to come out into the marvelous light of God, that Christ may come and take us home. And as we pray today, we are seeking to go with the, third, the second angel's message to call those who are in Babylon to come out because Babylon is falling. 
that great city, that admiration of the world is falling because Jesus is the ultimate conqueror at the end of the day. And those who are in Jesus Christ are more than conquerors in him. And so we are not to conquer alone because God says, I have my own in Babylon. You see, Jesus, when he came, he says, I have my sheep that are in that other place. Other, other, other fold and I need to call them to come into this fold that they may be together with us and have one shepherd which is Jesus Christ and so in the second angel's message you see is a call which is very short but very clear that the world with all its broken and false belief systems institutions and movements is corrupted and unreliable and fallen and we need to tell people so that the what you see in the world, that is not life because it is an empty life and we need to call them, invite our brothers and sisters to come to the fold of God that we may be under the shepherding of our Lord Jesus Christ. Indeed, the second angel, the second messenger is crying out in the sky and saying, Babylon is fallen, is fallen that great city because she made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. And Jesus is inviting. You know, when you go to Revelation chapter 18, the same uh, book of Revelation chapter 18 and verse number 2, the reason why we have to call them to come out, chapter 18 of Revelation, verse number 1 and 2, I'm interested in verse number 2. But let's begin with verse number 1. And after these things, I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power, and the earth was lightened with his glory. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon, the great is fallen. He is fallen and he has become the habitation of devils and the, hope, and the hold of every soul spirit and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. And when you go to verse number four, and I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye may be not partakers of her sins and that ye receive not of her plagues. The urgency that the second angel comes in is because for sure the Babylon is fallen. That great city is fallen. He will never stand between his God and his people. He will never stand in the way of the Lord. They thought that they had overcome, but Christ, when he died on the cross, they didn't know that on Sunday morning, Jesus would resurrect, and those who are in Christ Jesus are more than conquerors, and soon he is coming, but he wants to have his people be brought out of Babylon, that of confusion be brought into marvelous light that may be prepared. Now, this moment as we pray, we are seeking that you may recognize that God wants to use you to reach out to a brother, to a sister, who is living in confusion of what is true, of what is right, of righteousness of God, that they may come and embrace the righteousness of Christ. They may come and embrace the gospel of Christ. They may come and be prepared for the second coming, but not just themselves alone, but also be totally involved in reaching out, becoming the messengers, the second angel's message. Take it to the world and bring God's people out of the wickedness of the world before the world is destroyed. Who to join with me this morning as we pray? And as you seek the Lord, that the second angel's message may be our message today, may be your message today, and may God may use you in particular to reach out to be a blessing to many. Allow me to read a few prayer concerns here that we need to, to, to pray for as we join together with what we have. Number one, we pray for a deeper understanding of the three angels' messages. Pray for God to take anything. Pray for God to take anything, Babylonian, out of your heart and to give you courage to call people out of spiritual co confusion. Number three, pray for today's gen general conference session business meeting with its decisions for the world church. Uh, pray for the general conference youth ministries and youth ministries in your local church in Nairobi Central to be used in bringing out children back to Jesus. Pray for some, some of the most difficult and unentered areas of the world. Pray also for God's spirit to break the strongholds by his mighty power and miracles. And pray honestly for your seven names or the seven list, the seven member list that you have. And don't give up praying for them. We are on until we are over with 40 days of prayer. We thank God for what he has done so far. 
we have received uh, a, t a new team. Of, we have the, the president of the General Conference has been re-elected, uh, uh, Pastor Ted Wilson. We have his team now, constituent, you know, the, 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 the vice presidents, the ministry departments. We thank God for, we are seeing through um, online that the meetings are, are moved and the power of the Holy Spirit is within the meetings. Let's continue praying until they are done with this. And as you pray for yourself, remember the friends that you're praying for. Join with me now as we pray together. Gracious Father in heaven, thank you for the precious moment. The second angel message declares that the Babylon is fallen. And we do recognize that this falling of Babylon is not because of our doing, is not because of our efforts. We have done nothing in terms of making this Babylon to fall. But this is your will, this is your power, this is your plan and is your effort to bring down the strongholds of the evil one. Yet, Lord, we have a, a part to play in this. One, those of us who have come from that darkness, we may be used of you to go and bring our brothers and sisters who are living in Babylonian captivity, who are living in aspects of Babylon in their lives, those who are walking in the camp of the evil one in one way or another, those who have not aligned their lives according to your will, we are here, Lord, to remember them this moment of prayer, that my Father, you may reach out and lead them to see those Babylonian characters, the Babylonian traits in their lives, those aspects of Babylon in their spiritual work that easily ensnares them and tangles them and makes them backslide, Lord. We're praying for those habits. We're praying for those tendencies. We are praying for such attitudes that they may be removed in Jesus' name. The Lord, you will fight for your people. This is the very last days of this age. And you're calling your people to come out of Babylon because you're destroying it utterly. So, Lord, we are praying today that we may reach out to each one of us individually through the power of the Holy Spirit and make the sin in us become more weakened, that we will have an hatred for sin and admire virtuousness. We thank you, Lord, for what you're doing. We are praying for a revival of a spiritual work with you. We are praying the Lord who can revive us to see you, understand you, know you, and serve you. We want to reach out to our seven-member list, our friends that we are praying for, my Father that you will reach out to them, that you may lead them, open their eyes to see the Babylonian captivity in their lives, the Babylonian traits and uh, attitudes in their life, that they may accept to, to surrender and be removed from those kind of disconnect and from those kind of attractions, that they may live a good life in this life before you come the second time. Lord, we want to pause here to thank you for what you have done and what you're doing, the general conference meetings that are ongoing. We thank you, Lord, for the appointment and appointment of leaders in the general conference leadership, the church. We are praying for peace. We are praying for prosperity of the church. We are praying for a progressive ministry of every single leader, every single church member, right from general conference to the local church. With this insight, our eyes fixed on the agency of the three angels' message, that we will be the messengers of this age to go totally involved in the gospel and invite people to come because soon Christ is coming. Well, may you bless us. May you meet us at our very point of needs. May you fill us with your spirit. May you walk with us. May you, Lord, lighten up our lives with your glory. May we admire to sit always at your feet. May we seek to listen as you speak to us and, and direct us. Prepare us for the second coming, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you, my dear viewer. Thank you for remaining tuned. Thank you for subscribing to our channel. And if you have not yet, please just click that red button there because we need to keep you, you know, informed and blessed every time we have such kind of programs. But I also want to thank you so much for sharing these messages with your friends. And if you have not done so far, just continue sharing or begin sharing. Share with as many as you can because you never know who needs this message for such a time like this. See you tomorrow. God bless you.